We're rolling. Uh, I believe they left you with a problem. Remember, we are using this method of virtual work, and we had one set up there, and it uh, supported like that, and then we had a distributed load like that. And I asked you to look using virtual work to uh, come up with the support. Um, I think we only looked for one support. Yeah, just the supported B, which was the uh, roller thing there. <coughs> Let's see how you did. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we'll talk about it. Start with the free body diagram, because if you remember what we're looking for, we're gonna we're gonna imagine a small displacement of the object. Calculate the work done by the forces during that displacement, and use that to find the reactions that we're, uh, we're looking for. In this case, we're only looking for B. Uh, it could also work for A, of course. What was the uniform distributed load? It was 400, so it came out to be 2 meters, is that what I said? The whole thing, was two, the whole thing was 2 meters, okay. So I actually did read my notes before I put it up on the board. I don't always screw up some stuff. Okay. So the, the, we replace the, the distributed load with uh, a load that's 1 half of 400 times 2, which is 8, and 1 half that's 400, is that right? Okay, and one third of the way from the fat end, which is one third of a meter, right? No, uh, two thirds of a meter. Am I not doing something right in my head? that happen? How many times a day? And then go over there and it happens for another four or five hours a day. And then come in at 1 a.m. <laughs> What's wrong? Is something wrong? No. No? That's okay? Yeah. All right. Then what? Steps through the uh, virtual work method until we get uh, until we get better at we start doing some more complex um, more complex structures. We give it a little bit of a displacement. Now you have several choices. Uh, any of them could be fine, I guess, but one will lead more directly to the answer than another. For example. If we move it in the x direction, imagine a small displacement in the x direction, that's not going to help us with b at all. Because yeah, b does no work in the x direction, so there's no sense making that displacement. We could displace it in the y direction. That would be a little more useful because b does some work in that direction. But why would that not be uh, what other complication is with doing that? If we move it in the y direction to get the work B does in that direction, we still have A in there. So if we move it such that point A doesn't move, 
then that force does no work and it's not part of the equation. So we can, we can simplify things for ourselves a little bit by displacing it such that A doesn't displace. And the easiest way to do that is to either rotate it about A one way or the other, whichever, it doesn't matter which. So maybe we'll imagine a rotation something like that of some small amount del alpha, we might call it. Doesn't really matter. Remember, that's going to drop out soon anyway. Uh, and then what? Then what? We've got this small virtual displacement. And then what? Furrow your brow at me. See if that works. I thought maybe somebody else would try it. Ooh, Chris, Chris is over there with magic eyebrows. Alan, Alan's trying so hard not to furrow. I can't even see your brow anyway, it doesn't matter. No, I'm seeing your forehead. Yeah, put that back down. <laughs> What's next? Will we find the work? Yeah, well, we find the virtual work during that displacement, and our symbol for it is this little del. That uh, that to me just that means very very small. Um, a change in something that's real small. We'll use that a lot in uh, thermal next next term. Um, so we've got uh, two forces that are moving in that direction, so they each contribute a little bit of virtual work. We're looking for B, so how much virtual work does B do? It's the magnitude of the force times the distance it moves in its own direction, which is... How far? We're looking for this little bit of displacement from here up to here. How far is that? Remember, technically, that point actually goes through a little bit of an arc, but that's so similar to what we got there that we we don't we we easily calculate that arc length easily because uh, I say because you guys all know how to do that calculate the arc length when you have an angle of some size and a radius of some size you know most of you very quickly know how to calculate that arc length as R member. R what? R member? Is that what you said? R times member? Who was your physics one teacher? He sucked. <laughs> Yeah, the, that that arc length is our beta. Now the displacement we're talking about here is uh, well, it isn't even the what's that called the chord? I think they call that. It's not even that. It's so small that we're just taking to be straight up here now. Remember, this is greatly exaggerated. We're gonna we let that be very, very similar to the arc length. So this point actually goes through a little bit of arc. We'll easily calculate that because we know the radius, and we know the angle, and we'll let that represent the distance this has traveled. It, it's okay anyway, because remember, any sideways travel of that point has no work contribution, so we're only interested in the vertical component anyway. And so that's then the radius of the arc 
times the angle of the arc, which is that del alpha. What about the 400 newtons? It also goes through a little bit of a displacement. How far? It goes from here up to here. Four, 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 negative four hundred. Why negative? The opposite direction. Yeah, because the force is one direction, the displacement's in the other direction. So it's the magnitude of the force times the distance it moves in that direction, which is one and a third, four thirds, 1.3, whatever you want to call it, meters uh, times then del alpha. <clears throat> Only other force is A, contributes no work because there's no displacement there. Then what? Factor out the del alpha. Well, actually, there's, you know, however you want to finish it up is uh, up to you. And this in Newton meters, as it should be, since it's a work term. Then what? Then what? Yeah, we, this this is this is the 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 theoretical basis of this virtual work method that there's no virtual work being done because there's no real displacement, and then uh, we can divide it through by del alpha, and that means to us then that this must equal zero, and you can solve for b. For a more complex one, bring it on. Yeah, we could have gotten that by uh, by uh, summing the moments. Uh, don't forget that there's the one meter in there to make this new meters. We could have gotten that by summing the moments, uh, but this is a simple one, so we'll do a more complex one now. That wouldn't be so easy. To do. Certainly couldn't do it in the one step we're going to be able to do this one. So here's the contraption. The contraption du jour. Oh my goodness, that was French. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to edit that out of the tapes. Should bring some soap to class and wash my mouth out. Alright, so I got uh, freely pinned joints. They don't necessarily need to be, but uh, that's the type of structures we've been looking at. So just a, a nice simple thing like that. And each side leg is two and a half meters. And the bottom leg is 1.5 meters. So that's the basic piece, and then it's simply pinned at two spots. One right there, and one right there. Um, 1.5 meters, and one meter, and 1.5 meters, and one meter. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a uh, 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 diagonal. It's not symmetric. And then it's also got a roller support there. How 
up at the top. So there's the whole picture. We'll label these for ease. This will be A, and we're going to apply a force at A, B, C, D, E, and then uh, F is fine, because we need to find that reaction, so we'll call it. Got the picture? And our goal is to find the reaction at F. Now, could do it with moments and some of the fours and everything, but uh, we can do it in uh, in a single equation. This this could be a good problem for the game show that I'm producing called uh, Solve That Problem. And you say, I can do it in three equations. And then you say, I can do it in two. And you would say, hey, I can do that virtual work. I could solve that in one equation. And the host goes, yes, you take it. Actually, you'd be you'd be work you'd be uh, up at the board, <laughs> <laughs> and they'd have to be the contestants. Then. So, so you you have now said <laughs> name that equation. Uh, all right. So here we go. So a free body diagram, and we can keep it simple. We we don't necessarily have to draw them as members. We're just looking for a diagram to help us a little bit. We've got the load force here. Oh, by the way, that's uh, 200 newtons. That's 200 newtons. What other forces? F. Yeah, we're looking for F. What's it look like? That's just a roller support, so it's, again, just a, a simple, normal reaction. That's the one we're looking for. Now, if that was the free body diagram, we'd be done. That would be virtual work, because you didn't actually do anything. But there's also, of course, a support at B, and we're not sure how that goes. And there's one, of course, at E. We weren't asked to find them, but man, they're there. So that's why we couldn't just do a simple thing and say, oh, F must be equal to 200. What about the forces at C and D? Simple pin joints there. What about the forces at C and D? Now what about them? How do we how do we put those in? Does that count as a brow furrowing? I can't tell. This poor one. Huh? <laughs> so why is that your answer? Uh, yeah, no, I mean they're there. They're part of the the member. But but they don't matter. Yeah, why not? Those are internal. We only do the external forces on a free body diagram, and it's only the external. We could, if we want, break this into separate members, and we could still do the virtual work method there. That would expose the forces at C and D, but we don't need to. Okay, so we need to find F. The best thing to do is a little displacement such that F is the only one that moves. If we make a displacement where B and or E move, 
then we've got two unknowns. We've got F and whichever one of those, maybe three unknowns, if we let all of them move. If we did a simple X ways displacement, all three of them would be in there. In fact, we, we don't have three unknowns, we actually have five unknowns. So we need to do a displacement, if possible, such that F is the only one that moves. Well, one way to do that is uh, uh, just let it pivot around those and displace, maybe uh, count a displacement in that direction. So we'll have uh, that force go that way. We don't want anything else to move. So that piece would go like that. These two points are still 1.5 meters apart. We don't uh, we don't want these pieces to actually deform, even though it may kind of look like it just because of the drawing. And then let it pivot around that point, and then we get a displacement there for F. Maybe we could call it del x sub F since F is moving in the, in the x direction. That way, uh, B and E don't do any work. So it takes them out of the virtual work equation for us. So all we need to do then is figure out these, uh, these different displacements. Let's see, this will be del x a. We can call, let's see, we can call this, um, there's an angular displacement there. Uh, I guess we're going to need it because remember we use del x a as the, as the uh, arc length. So maybe we'll call that del theta. And that, of course, that's the, the same angle down here. What about this angle? It's the same on either side of E. Is that del theta? Well, not sure. Not sure. Let's think about it a little bit. There's del x c, right? That was point c, moved that way that much. Here's del x d. Are those the same? Yeah, if they're not the same, then this bottom member deformed, changed length. And so those two have got to be the same. So we know this is del theta, so we can write, let's see, we can write that this displacement, del xc, equals the one meter times del theta. Is that right? Comfortable with that? Chris, you're furrowing your brow. That's better, thank you. Billy, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, it's, it's our usual uh, arc length thing. We, 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 I guess we could buy, do it by the tangents and stuff, but uh, these are very, very small displacements. So we don't want to mess with that kind of thing. Let's just say that. And that's got to be equal to del x d. And the question is here, is this angle 
the same as that angle. So for now, we'll give them different labels. And we may find out they're equal. That just will make some things simpler. But that's what we're looking at. So del xd must be this distance times del alpha, right? And that distance was 1.5. 1.5, remember we're trying to figure out is del alpha equal to del theta. Are they? No, no, they're not. They're not. Uh, they're, 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 it's easy to relate them to each other, but no, they're not the same. So, not too big a deal. We'll handle that in a second because we know what the relationship between them is. So it'll be easy to factor them out. Okay. Comfortable. For the next step. Because now we figure out how much work done by any forces that contributed work. So we have 200 times what? times del x a, <coughs> which is 1.5 del theta. Right? 1.5 meters del theta. Positive? Yeah, positive. They went in the same direction. No movement at B, so no force there. C and D are inter internal forces. So even if we, if there was work done, it cancels because they're equal and opposite. Uh, same thing in D and E. And so we have then minus F, which we're looking for, times del XF, which is one meter, del alpha, but del alpha equals uh, Let's do it, uh, we'll solve for del alpha, just because the math is a little bit easier. So we'll say del theta equals 1.5 del alpha. Is that right? Actually, it wouldn't have any units because they cancel. Is that right? Better be, it's got a box around it. And so we can put that up here. So this equals, see, 200 times 1.5 is 300 newton meters del alpha, which is, or del, yeah, del theta, which is 1.5 del alpha minus F times 1 meter Del alpha. So the units will work because we got the one meter in there. Maybe we should leave it in there just until we get all the way through. And so you don't get home and say, what the heck did we do there? That was so magical and beautiful, but I don't remember what it was. Okay? That look all right? Now what? Take out del alpha, set it equal to zero. 300 times 1.5, that's 450 minus F del alpha equals zero. Did I do that right? I think so.
And so F equals four hundred and fifty newtons. So good thing we didn't just assume it was two hundred newtons. Your boss would have had you into her office for a little discussion. That sometimes happens when bosses call their employees in for a little discussion. For your brow during those meetings. There's the oh my gosh, you lost the game show because it took two equations. You're out. The buzzer goes. The guy hits that big button and the floor drops out and you go Shoosh, and everybody cheers because <laughs> they're glad it was you and not them. Ready for more complex? Well, let's see. Let's let's uh. Let's lay some ground rules. Certainly, as things get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more confusing, um, as because we we've got a, a complication in the next one. Even though it's a simple setup, it's uh, it's got a little bit of a complication to it. That well, this one had the little complication that the two angles weren't equal. Uh, it would have been very quick and easy to assume those two angles were equal and you wouldn't have gotten the right answer. So we'll lay out uh, just a couple of guidelines. We've done most of them already. Draw a free body diagram with the external forces, not the internal forces, but all the reactions and any loads. Too. And this one was more important than it was for the very simple ones we started with, but uh, is is pretty pretty useful if we're if we're careful with it if it's possible. Um, so draw a virtual displacement. And you can do it however you want. If you want to do it with dotted lines or different colors or whatever, that's not that's not crucial. Just uh, you're probably seeing that the bigger you make these, the more easy they are to work with. Draw a virtual displacement. You can choose what that's going to be, but it works best if possible, such that only one unknown moves. Now, we did not do that on the first ones we were doing. We just moved it in the X, moved it in the Y, and the unknown, a couple of the unknowns moved. A couple of the unknowns moved. Uh, but that was such a simple one, it worked out okay anyway. Plus, we were trying to compare it to what we got if we did our equilibrium equations anyway. Um, with the caveat, and don't worry, that's not French with the caveat that uh, uh, it may not be possible to come up with that kind of movement. See, the idea is uh, imagine we had a, a problem like this. We have uh, a long member, but it's actually made up of two pieces hinged together. and supported here, here, and here, and loaded something like, and we're not going to actually do this one, so uh, exactly what's going on here is crucial just for display purposes. And then we've got some kind of load on it. Uh, what? Uh, how would we do this one without virtual work? Anybody see a small problem? Well, actually, there's not a small problem here, but uh, the 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 small problem could be that we have. 
two unknowns there. One here and one here, we have four unknowns. Using the equilibrium equations, we only have three equations. So normally we couldn't solve this one. Yeah, it turns out one of these is zero and then we only have three unknowns, so we could work it as a, as a uh, regular problem. But if one of these had a little slant to them, or there was some other transverse force, then there would be four unknowns and we couldn't normally solve it. So we'd step through this, we'd draw the free body diagram. We have some force there, we have a known load there, some force there, known load there, and some force there. And then we would have to go through a couple steps, draw virtual displacement such that only one unknown moves is possible. So we might make our first move as just that piece moves. And so we have only that piece with any kind of displacement. And the other two don't do anything, so they don't come into the equation. When we do that, uh, we get one equation, one unknown, and it's just an awful lot simpler. If we did this as a, as a three body diagram, or as a equilibrium equations, you're going to have a system of equations you have to solve. This way, we have one equation, one unknown. For each unknown, we just march right through them. Then for our next displacement, maybe we do, here's the original piece, maybe we do a displacement, something like that. So that only B moves. A and C didn't move. We'll have one equation with one unknown in it. We solve it. <coughs> and then, of course, the last possibility. There's the original. And we let it displace like that. And then only C moves. And we have a, 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 a simpler Oh, actually, B moved in that picture. So what we have to do is something maybe a little bit different. We can put it up here. If we wanted to make it so that neither A nor B move, and only C does, then our displacement would have to be something like this. Because then A and B don't move, only C moves, and we can have a single equation with C in it. We could have done the first one I draw, drew if we knew B by then. But on some of these, as I've already shown you, we're only looking for one. It's nice if we can set up one equation for that one unknown, and then we're all done. And then the, the steps we've had before. Um, write the virtual work equation. Set it equal to zero. Determine the displacement in terms of a common factor. Now for the early ones we did, that was very easy. Each motion had a either a, the, the same displacement in it 
del x for the first problem we did, then we did it in del y. That was the common factor to all the displacements. For some of them, when we had to do a rotation, they all had the same rotation. But as we saw in that second, the, the one we just did, sometimes the rotation is a little different for each, but we write them in terms of each other and make it into a common factor, and then we can factor that out. Uh, we might have to do what's going to happen in the next problem, where we write the displacements in terms of each other and then differentiate that <coughs> to make it into a common factor. You'll see what I mean when, when we go through it, uh, if, if need be, if needed. Uh, write the displacements uh, as a relation to each other or to a common factor and then differentiate. Oh no, I have to write that down here. This is so difficult. Don't you ever think that being a professor is easy. And then we uh, deliberate and we get uh, the common factor that way. Hard to write in a sentence, but much easier to show in uh, an example. For, for those times when we can't necessarily get a single movement based on only a uh, particular motion, uh, a single motion. So. So here's our new problem. Simply pinned, kind of wobbly member. There. Uh, we have an isosceles triangle. So these two things are the same length, clearly not the same thickness. <laughs> Do. What other forces? 
Reactions at A and B, of course, they're pinned. And so we'll have an AY, an AX, uh, BX, and BY. So, so that's four unknowns, which means we couldn't do this with equilibrium equations. So we have to do it uh, in some other way uh, using virtual displacement. So draw a virtual displacement such that only one unknown moves if possible. Of course, we don't want A to move at all, even though it's one of the unknowns. Actually, it's two of the unknowns. We don't want A to move at all because we weren't asked to find it. We're asked to find B only. So how can we move it such that only one unknown moves? We could rotate the whole thing, let it lift. Might be that the geometry is a little more difficult. What if we did? something like this. Let B move sideways a little bit, <coughs> but it doesn't move up, so that only BX has moved. BY, BY's moved, but it's perpendicular to the motion, so it's not going to matter. So we have a little bit of displacement here. Del x b and so we can figure out how much work is done in that virtual displacement because these members can't change length we have two motions here of del x p that's that's actually maybe we'd call that del x q since it's q that moved in that direction. That would make more sense. Del x q. But then there's also a little bit motion down. That would be del y p. I think we could. We, we, yeah, we could call them that. That'll work. Okay, so we can we can now write the virtual work equation. And maybe there are other motions you could use, but uh, we got to do one of them. Just as long as only one one uh, one little piece moves. Okay, so write the virtual work equation. Uh, A does no work, P does how much work? P del Y B. They're in the same direction, so the positive P del Y P. How about Q? They're in the opposite directions. Q's to the left, the motion's to the right, so it's a negative. And remember, P and Q are, are assumed to be known loads. Uh, minus Q del X Q. And then minus BX Del X B. That look okay? I don't understand that. What? The work that P does subtracting the other work from it. Yeah, the, because P is positive because they're in the same direction. The force and the motion are in the same direction. Q is negative because it's 
motion is in the opposite direction of its action. It acts to the left, it moves to the right. Gotcha. And then same thing for this one. Acts to the left, moves to the right. I guess since they're you know, on different axes, it doesn't seem to make sense to just add them, sum them all together. But I guess. We are summing them all together. It's just some of them are negative. No? It's yeah. Just keep going on through. I'll click in a second. Here. Okay. All right. Now we have to relate these to a common, some common factor because we have all these different motions and we don't know how they relate to each other. So we can back up a little bit and remember that we have this original angle here and that changes a little bit too. And that change is common to them all. So we can say something like, let's see, uh, the, the position of B itself if A is the origin, is 2L cosine alpha. That's just the distance between A and B. <coughs> we can differentiate that, del XB equals what, uh, the 2 and the L are constant, what's the derivative of the cosine? Negative sine, so this would be minus 2L sine alpha del alpha, where that little bit of change there is del alpha. And we can say the same thing for the other point. The x-coordinate of P originally is just L cosine alpha. And so del XP is minus L sine alpha del alpha. And you can see what we're getting is the common term del alpha in each one. So we'll be able to swap out that one, have del alpha as a factor, swap out this one, have del alpha as a factor, and we can do the same thing. Uh, we have this y component thing here, but we can do the same thing with it. That's L sine alpha, and that derivates to L cosine alpha del alpha. And so now we can replace each one of those with its uh, partner piece. So P, take out del Y P, put in L cosine alpha del alpha. Minus Q. We'll just set this up, then we're all done. Uh, del XQ. Oh, I didn't write that one down. We didn't. Well, uh, oh no, that's the same thing. That's, that's what this is. This shouldn't have been XP. That should have been XQ. Sorry. Because P didn't move in the X direction, only Q did. So, del XQ is minus L sine alpha del alpha minus Bx um, minus 2L sine theta delta. No, alpha, sorry. Oh. That makes sense? Because now everything's in that common term del alpha. When we set it to zero, that'll cancel. And we can solve for Vx. Which we'll finish up um, because I'm carefully watching just when the classes end because uh, I care about that. <laughs>